All right, I am joined by another triple threat this morning. Now, she is an actor, an entertainer, even a general manager. This past February, she was awarded Humanitarian of the Year from AIDS Help. She is also our current Queen Mother. Now, on top of all that, she's a pretty incredible person with a very unforgettable first name. Gassy, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for having me this well, morning. I am so happy to have you here. And Gassy, I have to say, yes. you are different from other drag queens that uh, I've had on the show. That you would not be whistling Dixie on that one, my dear. <laughs> not at all. But I love it. You've got a very unique style. Yes. You've got the blue hair, the, the big sunglasses, the beautiful crown. I love it all. Why, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you too can look this fabulous at Cross Dress for Less, just on Roosevelt. <laughs> okay. Now, I have to start out mm. by asking you about your name. Yes. Gassy Wins. Gassy Wins. Where in the world did this come from? Well, it's a very interesting story. Basically, I was working on Fire Island, and I was moved from one bar, the Tides, to the Ice Palace. And when I was hired at the Ice Palace, the general manager, Isaac Vaughn, wanted me to bartend, work the front desk, and be the grill person for Burgers and Bingo on Mondays. Now, ironically, the gentleman who had been doing burgers was a gentleman by the name of Carlos Martin, who is a Key West conk who couldn't come up that season because of Hurricane Katrina. So there was another drag queen who ran Bingo. So he wanted me to come up with some kind of character. So of course, this was on Monday at four in the afternoon in the heat, so I didn't want to then get as glamorous as I am today. So basically, it was Kmart house coats, it was uh, mop caps, wig with curlers, the big glasses, so less makeup. Something very casual. So I came up with the look. I came up with the idea. My roommate at the time was a gentleman by the name of Sweetie, who has been a longtime drag queen in New York City. And so I came out in my outfit to take the picture to send to Isaac. And I said, but I don't have a name. To which Sweetie looked at me point blank and said, well, since Gusty Wins was hosting Bingo, then Gassy Wins <laughs> should be at the grill, since it was a gas grill. So. Uh -huh. That's said, the that name. made perfectly logical sense to me, so we took the picture, we emailed it to Isaac, he loved it, and Gassy Wins was born. I love it. And Gassy Wins eventually made her way down to Key West. Now, yes. you did some time in New York City. Yes. You wanted to pursue an acting mm -hmm. career. Yes, I graduated from, actually, I'm wearing the Syracuse University colors today, ironically. Yeah. Uh. Graduated from Syracuse in 1991, uh, moved directly to New York after that for 12 years. And again, did not do drag at all, except for fun, on Fire Island, nothing major. Uh, but Portia, who is a well-known celebrity here in Key West, as well as in New York, would be down here seasonally. So she was down here for the holidays. I was planning a vacation with my mother to come down for Christmas. And so maybe two weeks before I was supposed to come down, Portia called and said she wanted me to bring the girls, meaning the drag, <laughs> with me because she had gotten me work. Well, I really wasn't keyed on the idea because it was a vacation, but I said, what the heck? So they had a grill in the backyard of Bourbon Street Pub, so they signed me on to do the grill for the weekend. So I came down and I got all dressed up in my house coat and I went back and they showed me the setup. I said, fine. So I finished my first shift and I went to go cash out my drawer and I said I had rung $300. And the guy looked at me and my thought was it was a holiday weekend. I had like under this, so I had not even made close to find out that, oh no, the grill usually made like $50 a day. So suffice to say I was an overnight sensation slinging my hot meat, as we called it so respectively, in the day. <laughs> so basically, after the weekend was over, the owner came up to me and said, would you like a job? And I said, well, let me think. I could either go back to New York in February in the cold and the yuck and the muck mm -hmm. and the whatnot, or I can stay in Key West for four months in the 80 degree weather and cook at the grill on the weekends and have be housed and fed. And I choose this. So I mm -hmm. went back to New York. Uh, I expected to be back for two weeks to get a sublet or whatnot. And that all fell together in like a day. So seven days later, I was back. And the rest, shall we say, eight years later is history. It absolutely is history. And I have to say, you have the personality to match your whole attire and well, everything. You have such an awesome personality. Thank so you. bubbly, so much energy. And people can actually see you a lot now in Key West. You're performing well, more than just where you were at, at Bourbon. That is true, yes. I, I'm usually found on Sundays doing karaoke at 801. Uh, from 4 until 9. Uh, on the occasional Monday, you'll find me at Aqua Nightclub doing dueling bartenders. And being Queen Mother, though, uh, that's really my big focus for the next year. Because as Mahjong, who is the originator of the pageant, will tell you, it is not just a title, it is a job. Because basically what you are supposed to do during your 12-month reign is avail yourself to every charity in the Keys 
for any fundraising event that they have and try to raise as much money for those said charities in the course of your reign. So case in point, yes, it's now uh, it's a August. I have done, I did five fundraisers in the past two weeks, mm -hmm. two of which I started myself, three of which I was just made appearances at. So I have quite a busy social calendar. And mm -hmm. now as we are getting ready to go into King and Queen of Fantasy Fest and that eight month campaign, yes, you're gonna see either JB, what is the underside of all of this, or Gassy, a lot in the next eight weeks, that is for sure. Well, how awesome. And all the money, again, that you're raising, yes. it's going to some amazing organization yes. here in the Key. Mm -hmm. Now, you just, you let out your first name, JB. Oh, yes. So what's it like, you know? Is it hard to do the switch from JB to Gassy? Uh, well, actually, one of the reasons I like Gassy is because you said in terms of the originality, Gassy is 15 minutes on, five minutes off. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, it's like call a drag queen if you need something last minute. So that's pretty easy transition. Um, between the two of us, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting question. I, now I feel like I'm on Oprah. Uh, <laughs> I would have to say, well, again, Gassy is the bubbly, the extrovert. JB's a little more on the, uh, it, I wouldn't say introverted side, but I am the anal retentive Virgo homosexual. So henceforth, I, I keep a bit more of a regimented life as a boy than I do as a drag queen. I, I love it. But I, I, get love a, it. I, but I get away with a heck of a lot more in this outfit. You do, right? You yes. can be whoever you want to be as I Gassy. Do. Yes, I can. And what's it like working with all the other drag queens in Key West? Oh, another loaded question. Well, I better be careful how I answer this one. Well, again, I started after I worked at the grill at Bourbon. I then went on to be one of the 801 girls upstairs and was there for five years before I kind of hung up the heels professionally to then get Gassy more of a again, fundraising and then doing little spots here and there. Uh, but I've worked with all the 801 girls. I now am the general manager as JB of Aqua Nightclub, so I know all the Aquanets. And I'm also very familiar with the two queens down the street at Lottie Da, Randy Roberts, and Christopher Peterson. So... Uh, okay, I, I think you brought up the point, and which I will reiterate. The one thing about drag in Key West that is so special is that each drag queen is their own individual mm -hmm. and has a unique style, a unique personality, it, it, whether it be their choice of dress and their choice of wigs and their choice of music, and everybody brings something different to the table. So that is something very special. There, you're, you're never going to see a carbon copy down here up. So if you go to any of the shows, you don't go in and go, oh, it's all the same thing. No, you are going to get a complete array, and that's what makes it special. So mm -hmm. there's always drag drama. Mm -hmm. But we'll leave that for when we're actually on Oprah. Because it, there <laughs> we go. I was just going to say, you probably have more drama with the drag queens than I had in, in a sorority in college. It, Maybe? It, oh, it, <laughs> just a bit. I, I, I would say, well, we didn't have to, well, we weren't living together. Well, that's right. not true. When I was with Sushi's, I lived in Sushi's house the first uh, year I was here. So yeah. there were five of us in one house. But each of us had our own room with a door that locked so you could at least get away from. But, right. but yes, the dressing room, especially in 801, is very small. So when you have eight drag queens cramped together, yeah, it gets real interesting. Never is all moment. Well, no, it no, has very been, true. It has been fun talking with you this And you morning. too, Jenna. Thank, thank you, so you so much for being on and with me. You. And I'm getting you back on the show very soon as JB. Oh, so. well, it'll be a lot easier to get out here, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right, so stay tuned for that. All right, I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages.